Salente founded the Weekly Trends Journal, which includes political, economic, and social research, analysis, and forecasts. The motto of the publication is, History Before It Happened. It was founded as a periodical in 1980 and reflects the views of Salente and the Trends Research Institute. The Research Institute covers everything from the global economy to geopolitics, health, and education, etc. It deals with trend forecasting on a wide range of topics, including it also organizes keynote speakers and symposia, and conducts private consultations for businesses and individuals. Gerald Salente is the founder and director. Listen to the full podcast to prepare for the events, and are we on the verge of Great Reset? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. Please welcome back to the show, Gerald Chalente, publisher of the Trans Journal. Gerald, my friend, welcome back. Good to see you. Oh, it's great being on. Thank you so much for having me. Let's start with Gerald's take on the economy uh, today, you know, let me just paint the picture for, for everyone at home right now. U.S. inflation, four-decade record high, over uh, over 9%. Two-year yield gaining to just above 2.9%, meaning the closely watched two-year, 10-year yield curve remains inverted, a sign of an impending recession. And we have Wall Street coming off its strongest month since 2020 as investors found a relief rally after months of deepening pessimism. But is it just providing fake optimism? Well, that's that's what I want to hear from Gerald today, getting his thoughts. Uh, let's start on inflation, Gerald. Um, have, we, have we reached a peak? Oh, no. Inflation is only temporary. Oh, no, no, no. It's only transitory. And look at the crap that they've been selling for over a year and a half. Temporary. It's not real. It's only transitory. And then we have Janet Yellen, who back in April of 2021, said, no, no, this inflation isn't real. Now she's saying the recession isn't real. So if they're spewing out the same garbage, we should swallow it. Because after all, they've been totally wrong before, so they must be right now. Or else they were lying about it. Because everybody knew inflation was real. But they wanted to keep those zero interest rate policies so they could keep the the equity markets going up. What did they pump in? $6.3 trillion, the government, to fight the COVID war? Oh, that's not inflationary. It's the Russians that did it. It's the Russians that did it. It's a freak show in front of our eyes. The whole game is rigged. Hey, they just got a guy that was the head of the FDA that regulated the tobacco industry. Guess where he just went? Oh, he's reported last week. Philip Morris. Oh, who's the guy to play out with defense contractor? Oh, you mean Lloyd Austin that came off the board of directors of Raytheon? It's one big club and you ain't in it. The whole game is rigged. As you said, oh, inflation. Oh, what were they? They said in the, um, the GDP a decline, what, 0.9%? Oh, and the streets said it was going to go up 0.2%? Inflation came up, you know, and oh, 9.1% and the markets went up? I mean, come on. Let, let me just ask you this question, Gerald. Why not just keep the good times rolling then and just, you know, why, why stop the money printing? Just keep it going. They're, they're doing everything they can to do it. The market should have crashed back in 2020 when they launched the COVID war. It should have been over. The businesses have been destroyed. The damage that this COVID war has done is incalculable. Hey, let's not talk about office occupancy rates in America. Eh, They're only around 40%. Cities like in New York, 35%. Oh, all those businesses, the dry cleaners, the shoe repair, oh, the hairdressers, oh, happy hours, all gone, all gone. Oh, oh. And now I'm renting, and let's say I have eight stories of a building. My people don't want to commute an hour and a half anymore on the LIE. You know, they hated it going an hour and a half back and forth. I'll work from home three days a week. Great. I'll save on rent. This is for real. Office occupancy rates in New York City, in Chicago, in San Francisco, they're in the toilet, and so are the businesses for before this happened in 2000, you're in New York, 
Before this happened in 2019, there were for rent signs all over the place. Now look at it. The damage that this has done, the businesses that have been put out of business, oh, I went out of business, now I'm going to come back again? It, I'm telling you, it's incalculable. The damage yeah. that is done, we are in for the worst socioeconomic and geopolitical crisis in modern history. Let me ask you this. So now they're saying, okay, forget about the Build Back Better, Gerald. There's a new bill in town, and it's called the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. If it becomes law, the Democrats say it would reduce the deficit, cut federal spending on prescription drugs, and provide hundreds of billions of dollars to help the country address climate change. Okay, so now you're just pumping more money into the system. How does this inf fight inflation? Am, am I wrong in my reasoning here? That they're there's something else. What? Tell me one brilliant thing the federal government has done in my lifetime. And I'm 75 years old. What have they ever done? They're a bunch of losers. They're freaks. I don't know how people could look up to these clowns. Look at them. Look at them. Oh, Mitch McConnell. Now, there's a brilliant guy. Oh, Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Oh, another. Again, it's one big club and you ain't in it, as George Collins said. Who is Nancy Pelosi's father? Oh, the mayor of Baltimore at the top. Oh, yeah, who was George E. Bush? Oh, my daddy was, my daddy was a president. My, my grandpa was Prescott Bush. Who was Andy Cuomo? I'm going to rename the Tappan Zee Bridge after my daddy. I mean, look at the freak show. They don't know what they're doing. Look, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. The people that are running the government are the people I hated in high school and college that wanted to be class president or head of the student council. Oh, no. Yeah. They're arrogant Gerald, little I was, jerks. <laughs> Gerald, I was head of my student council, so <laughs> I hope you wouldn't have hated you know. me. No, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I do, but, but, but I want to stop you there because you mentioned Nancy Pelosi. There's a lot of news items circling around Nancy, who I know you adore. Um, one clip I think has got to be the clip of the summer, I'm sure you saw it, where she basically completely dodged the reporter question about insider trading and whether her husband uh, knew, sold so stocks based on some information he had received from her. She completely dodged the question. Uh, over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from you? No, absolutely not. Okay, thank you. And now, after all this, uh, there's talk that the Democrats may soon introduce legislation to ban members of Congress, senior staff, potentially their spouses, from buying, selling, or trading stocks. Um, what do you make of the timing of this? And is it the right call? It's nothing. I mean, look at the guy. What are they worth? About $500 million or something? Again, it, yeah, yeah, oh, he only bet a million bucks? Oh, I bet a million dollars playing the markets all the time. What, are you kidding me? It, the whole game is rigged. You ask me about the markets, the equities. This, we are in for the greatest collapse of all times. All they're doing is artificially pumping it up. And that's it. The bigs just want to get bigger, and the rich just want to get richer.